Hi guys, Lynn Shaw of Two Girls in a Book here with you this evening and I'm going to talk to you guys about my February wrap up. As you can tell from my little uh, promo there, I uh, was very busy for the month of February considering that it's not even over with yet. Um, I did go ahead and cut this month a little short because I will be leaving to go out of town for PenCon in Charleston next week and I won't be here to do a wrap up at that time. So hence we're doing it a week early. So without further ado, let's just dive right in and see what we've got. There we go. Up first is a audio book from Randy Cooley Wilson, and it's called A King Rises, and it is actually a novella from her, and it's um, a new release. The um, audiobook was released in February on the 4th, and the narrator, um, there's actually two narrators. There's a male and a female narrator. We have Lily Ward and Kale Williams. Both of them are part of the narration duo for A King Rises. Now, this is the first um, book, audiobook, that I have dove into from Randy. And I've got to say, um, she's been on my radar. I actually follow her on Facebook. She has the cutest little dog, and you guys know me. I'm addicted to those furry little butts. So um, that's actually, <laughs> I probably know more about her dog than I do about her books. But um, I got this audiobook from Caffeinated PR to do a review on. And um, even though it's the novella that kind of wraps up her um, trilogy, The Protector, uh, The Royal Protector Academy, I really didn't have any trouble following along with it. And I thought it gave me a good look at Randy's writing style, as well as what the um, series would be like. And I think it's actually something I would enjoy reading and getting into. So it was nice to kind of get that little peek into an author that um, I haven't read anything from in the past. So um, again, that was A King Rises by Randy Cooley Wilson. And if, uh, if you're new to her as well, this is a companion novella to the Royal, uh, Royal Protector Academy series. And um, I got to say, I enjoyed it. The narrators were both pretty good. I preferred the narration from the female Lily Ward better than I did Kale. Um, I felt like when he was just sort of... Um, you know, reading the filler parts of the story, he didn't do as well as when he was playing the, the role of Xander. Um, but other than that, I mean, that was really my only complaint. And like I said, um, she's a new to me author and I didn't know all of the backstory, but um, I think she gave enough of it away in the novella that I was able to follow along. And it's definitely a series that I hope to be checking out soon from her. Moving right along, another new to me author that I checked out this month, um, I actually came across this book and it was the cover that drew my attention. I'm not familiar with the author, Stephanie Perkins. So she was a new to me author when I um, snagged this book. It is a YA horror and um, the premise behind it is that there's a serial killer going around this small town in the middle of the United States. Um, and we're talking tiny small town USA, nothing but cornfields, nothing to do on a Friday night. Um, just, just tiny, tiny small town um, where really everybody is just, their main goal is just to graduate high school and to get out of town. Um, so there is a killer on the loose and he is... He's killing seniors from the high school and it's pretty gruesome. <laughs> I got to say, I really liked the premise of the story and I enjoy the story right up until the end. Um, when the killer is revealed and the motive behind the murders are revealed, 
I personally was highly disappointed. Um, I'm not going to tell you any more about the book because I don't want to ruin it for anybody else. I did go in and look at reviews um, once I finished it and other books by this author. And apparently um, Stephanie Perkins is primarily a um, romance writer. And this was her kind of foray into something new. And she dove right into horror. And um, you could kind of tell that this was her first jump into it, kind of looking back. But like I said, I enjoyed it. It's just when she got to the end and she revealed who the killer was and everything, I was just kind of like, seriously, that's why they murdered everyone. So it was a bit of a letdown for me. Um, but uh, based off of the reviews that I read, people love her romance stuff. I'm not a huge um, contemporary romance reader, so I probably won't go back and visit any of her other stuff. But if you are, she had a lot of five-star reviews. So check out some of her uh, contemporary romances. Let's see who else we have. Okay. This is the latest series from author Eric Asher, and it's called Mason Dixon and the Ghost Dinosaur. I'm a huge fan of Eric Asher. He writes the Vesic series, and I think it's probably the longest series running that I have ever stuck with. I'm currently on book number 11 in the series, and I'm actually going to do a review of the audiobook number 10 in the show tonight. So, um, but the, the newest series from him, the Mason Dixon, Mason Dixon and the ghost dinosaur, it's a Templars novella. And what this is about is your modern day Templars. And they are your first line of defense against things that go bump in the night. They are the keepers of centuries old, um, centuries old artifacts and legends and things like that. Um, things that, you know, we grew up stories we grew up hearing about as a child. One of the things that's mentioned in this book is called um, the raw head. And I remember as a young child, my mother telling me, Hey, it's getting dark. It's time for you to come in and me going, no, no, I'm not finished playing outside. And she'd say, well, it's going to get dark and the raw head's going to come and get you. And imagine my surprise when he popped up in this book and had to be defeated by Mason Dixon. <laughs> Who knew my mother might have known what she was talking about. <laughs> Don't anybody tell her I said that. Um, but anyway, this is a new series. There are novellas and they are roughly anywhere from um, 100 to 120 pages long. And this is the first book I've actually sat down and read from Eric Asher. Now, I'm a huge fan of his. But the Vesic series, I've completed the entire series via audiobooks, and there's a reason for that. Um, Eric Asher is a fantastic writer. I mean, he blows me away. The world building that he does, the number of characters and, and little details and nuances that he adds to his stories. I envision that he has a large room and there's like glass walls so that he can write all over them. And he's got a million notes everywhere that only he understands because when you read his books and you see the amount of detail and the amount of characters and everything that goes into it, I just can't fathom how he would keep any of that straight. So Mason Dixon, I actually read the book. I didn't have the audio book. I sat down and I read the book and I enjoyed it. It's fast paced. It's funny. He actually refers to it as a urban fantasy comedy. Um, and it's really got a lot of snark in it. Um, and it's a relatively plain read as well. Um, no sex or anything like that, but there's violence. They're, they're killing creatures, but it's nothing horrific. Um, and I absolutely loved it. But I got to say, it just wasn't quite the same for me because Eric Asher picks the best 
narrators when it comes to his um, audiobooks. And like I said, I've done the entire Vestic series via Audible, and the narrators for that series have just been, oh my gosh, fantastic. And they, um, they, um, sorry, I got sidetracked. There were notes popping up. <laughs> they have done such a great job of really bringing the story to life and having it just leap from the pages that my own imagination just really didn't seem to do it justice. The voice in my head that was reading the book wasn't nearly as good as the narrator. So I will be doing books two and three in this series next month for March, but I will be doing them via um, audiobook because I just preferred it that way. There's nothing wrong with the writing. I don't, you know, he's the only author that I've ever had that happen where I just preferred the audiobook over actually reading the book. And so that's a new concept for me. But um, I have thoroughly enjoyed the first installment in this series, and I cannot wait to see what other creatures they come up against and, um, and, and how they defeat them. Because, yes, there's a ghost dinosaur family in this. And um, like I said, tons of action. And it really is um, a, a fantastic new series from Eric Asher. Now, keeping in line with Eric, I have, let's see, one more from him. I gotta find it. Well, I'm supposed to have. Do, 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 technical difficulties. Try this again. Okay, where did he go? Oh my, you guys bear with me for just a minute. I had all this loaded on here ahead of time. I don't know where he went. While I'm looking for that really quick, I'm going to run through a few of the comments here. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hello, Candace. It's nice to have you here as well. Hello, April. Um, which book were you interested in wanting to check out? Um, if, you, if it was the Eric Asher one, you will not be disappointed, I can assure you. Let's see. Okay, back on track. <laughs> um, also from Eric Asher, I listened to book number 10. Yes, that's number 10 in the um, Vesic series um, by Eric Asher. And again, the... Um, the narrator is what really drew me into this. Um, several people have been talking about this series for years, and I really wasn't sure that it was something I was going to be into. It's um, it's urban fantasy. It's supernatural. It's paranormal. It weaves so much um, in, and it's such a complex story. Um and it's based around a necromancer. And again, like I said, I just, I wasn't sure it was something I was really going to be that interested in. Um, but a friend of mine talked me into it. And so I downloaded the first audio book and the um, narrator is a gentleman by the name of William DeFreeze. And he is amazing. There are numerous female and male characters in this series. And he managed to come up with a unique voice for every single one of them and really just nailed it the way I envisioned it in my head. He really brought the series together and it just exploded from my speakers. Um, and there's so much action in this series. And um, just to go back to the world building for just a moment, um, He's got Faye, he's got Seely, Unseely, Undines, 
necromancers, witches, werewolves, vampires, bat children, gods and goddesses and old gods and titans and leviathans. And I'm up to what, 12 or 15. And so I don't know how he keeps it all straight. I mean, it's mind blowing the things that in the stories are so complex. And um, currently at this point um, in the book of the claw, there is a war going on. Um, the Fae King is attempting to take over um, the world. He wants, he wants to, to bring the Fae back into our um, realm and he wants to rule. So there's a lot of fractions that are butting up against one another. And uh, honestly, I don't know how the author keeps it straight, but he does have a new narrator now. And let me check and grab her name real quick um, because William is no longer available um, to do the narrating any longer. I believe he had some health problems, um, but we have a new narrator and her name is Erin Moon. And this is the second book in the series that I've listened to that she narrated. And it is phenomenal. Um, I can't imagine reading these books and them doing my, my brain doing them justice that these narrators do. Um, I listen to probably three or four audiobooks a month. I love them. I'm in the car two hours a day, so it's perfect for me. Um, sometimes I even pop out on my lunch hour and just take 45 minutes to chill and, and listen to a book as well. So sometimes I get as many as three hours a day listening to an audiobook. Um, I love them. And I've got to say, out of the probably 30 or 40 audiobooks that I have listened to, no one has ever blown me away the way that Eric Durst. Uh, narrators do. His series are just phenomenal. And the Steamborn trilogy that he has as well, which is a steampunk series. And um, I don't have any graphics or anything for that tonight because I hadn't planned on talking about it. But that's a phenomenal series as well. And again, a genre that's completely left field for me that I never would have thought about um, picking up a book for. But the audiobook was just mind blowing. I loved it. Um, I cannot say enough about Eric Asher and either of these series, the Vesic series or the um, Mason Dixon Templar series. Um, definitely check both of those out. Um, you need to be fully prepared to be committed going into the Vestic series because it is highly, highly addictive. Um, probably the first seven or eight are full length novels. And then we get more into um, novellas and shorter novels. So, um, but whether you do book or audiobook, I highly recommend that you check into it. And if you're an author and you're thinking about doing um, audiobooks, I would definitely um, go out there and check some of his books out and see who he's had his narrators and who he's used and what he's done because he is killing it in my opinion. Um, fantastic job with those. So before we wrap it up with the books that I uh, read or listened to this month, I have one final book to share with you guys. And that is book three, The Sisters of Blood Creek. It's called Rise, Take Flight. And it's from Mary Gray and her sister, Cammie Larson. And this is a fantastic series. If you are a Supernatural fan, if you um, if you like that television show, while this series doesn't rip that off or anything like that, I, I don't want to um come across as that that's what it is because it's not um there we go you can see our names down um it's very similar to that in that it's two sisters um one is a senior in high school the other is a junior maybe or sophomore i can't remember because that's how the series starts but um it turns out that they um they have quite a past, quite a history from before, and they um, 
they're fighting what they call the blurred ones. And in the final book of the series, Rise and Take Flight, the younger of the two sisters, Eva, has been possessed by a blurred one. And um, it's a battle of her mind as well as her body trying to um, to deal with uh, being possessed, basically, and trying to overcome that and also defeat the uh, the blurred ones as well. I feel like there's not a lot more I can say about the series without giving it away. Um, it really is a fantastic series. And again, it's from Mary Gray and Cami Larson. And the book is with Monster Ivy Publishing. You guys know, if you've followed my page at all, that I think I've read almost every single book published currently with Monster Ivy Publishing. I have yet to be disappointed with anything that I've read there. Um, it is a great group of ladies, a great group of books. Um, everything is, it's got a nice edge to it, but it's a clean read as well. So if you've got teenagers or whatever, um, you don't have to worry about anything that you get from them. Um, you know, being too sexy or perverted or anything like that. They, they're, <coughs> excuse me, their tagline is that it's edgy, clean reads. And, it, and I have not been disappointed. I absolutely love this publishing house. Um, so anything you pick up from them um, is definitely a five-star read for me. And like I said, this series, again, is the Sisters of Blood Creek. It is a completed series that is out now. There's It's a trilogy, so there's three. And um, if you are a fan of the CW's Supernatural, you're going to love this series. Um, kind of in the same vein as that. Um, it's quick, it's action packed, and there's a lot of drama going on. And it's got a very sexy fellow in there named Raylan, and he's mine. That's my new book boyfriend. So, the rest of you ladies, y'all just back off because he's mine. You've been warned. So, before we close out tonight, that uh wraps up everything that I have dove into this month. Um, do you guys have any questions about anything that I posted here or that I mentioned? If you want to see any um, detailed reviews of anything that I wrote, you can follow me on Goodreads and it's under um, Two Girls in a Book. So I'm going to run over here real quick and check and see who all we've, let's see. Hi, Charlene. Hello, Elizabeth. Yeah, April, I was really disappointed um, with Stephanie's foray into horror. There's um, something inside your house. I was drawn in by the cover and the blurb really brought me in. Unfortunately, I was just disappointed um, and not in who the killer was, but the reasoning that she listed as to why he was killing these people, it just it was kind of anticlimactic for me. Um, but like I said, apparently she writes a lot of romance and people seem to really enjoy that. So if contemporary romance is your thing, maybe you check her out for that. Just not for the horror. Oh, thank you for joining us tonight, Mary. Yeah, I'm not sharing Raylan. I'm taking Raylan. He's mine now. I'm going to have to just tell Eva and Cammie hands off because he's mine now. <laughs> Who else do we have with us? Hi, Candace. Thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, before I wrap this up, I just want to give you guys a few minutes in case you had any questions about any of the books or authors here. Like I said, you can find all of my reviews up on Goodreads. You could also check out my, um, <laughs> you can also, thanks Mary, you can also check out my blog, um, twogirlsinabook.com. I post all of my reviews up on Thursdays. So uh, make sure you pop in on Thursdays. They are usually up by 9 a.m. Um, Eastern time. So um, I kind of focus everything that I do around on Thursdays. And Crystal, my partner in crime, pops on to, um, she pops on on Wednesday to post her reviews. 
So thank you, April. I appreciate you popping in and checking it out. I'm glad to have you here. I am very much looking forward to meeting April Baker. Um, she's an author as well, and she is going to be at the uh, Roanoke Author Invasion in April, and I believe it's April the 4th. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are going, but she's going to be there as well as one of my absolute faves, Kelly Martin and Melanie Gilbert. I cannot wait to go to this event. Um, I have not met Kelly in person yet. I'm going to be her new best friend. She just doesn't know it, but I am. Um, and I'm super excited to meet April. I went through her, uh, her um, pre-order for the event and I think I bought about 90% of her books. I'm a huge fan. I've read a couple of her um, ghost stories and I love them. So I decided since I finally get to meet her, I needed to go ahead and grab them all. So I'm very excited for that. So you guys can expect lots of uh, reviews and topics revolving around April this year. Oh, yes. And Roanoke is a free event to attend. Um, they do have an event page and an information page here on Facebook. Just look up the Roanoke Author Innovation and you can get all the information on that. Looks like we are winding down for tonight. I am so glad that you guys um, joined me and got to listen to me fangirl over Eric Asher. <laughs> um Fingers crossed, I have reached out to him about coming on here and doing an interview with me for one of our Fangirl Thursday nights. Um, he's busy in the month of April, so it may be May or so before we can do anything. But he's definitely game if we can just get our schedules worked out so that we can get something put together. Um, I also pinned to the top of the page the Fangirl Thursday schedule. I am super excited. We are going to have Kelly Martin with us on March the 5th, and she's going to be here to talk about her new middle grade book called What Rachel Did. I read an ARC last month and featured it here on the blog, and I loved it. Even as a middle grade, it still scared me. I thought it was fantastic. So I am super excited to have her come on here and talk about that. And then on... Let's see, March the 12th, we're going to have Mary Gray and Cammie Larson with us, and we're going to talk more in depth about their um, Sisters of Blood Creek series. And the third book, um, Rise, Take Flight, was one that I featured on here tonight. So we're going to talk about the series as a whole when they come on, and hopefully maybe get a little behind the scenes information on them. And you know, I may have to have a little talk with Cammie about Raylan, because she's going to have to give him up. So we'll see how that goes. And then we're going to round out the month with Melanie Gilbert on the 26th. And she's going to be here to talk about um, her final book and her fairy tale retelling. And that's called Deal. I am currently reading an arc of that now. So I can't wait to, to be able to talk about that with you guys some more. And Poison should be up and available by that time as well. So we'll be talking more in depth about that one as well. The last time she was here, um, we did the cover reveal for Poison, as you may recall. And I think that's probably my favorite one in the series. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Going into April, on the 9th of April, we're going to have with us Jordan Thompson and her debut novel is called What Lurks Below. I read the first three chapters of that book so far just to kind of get a feel for it and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that at the end of the year when I do my book review and my year in review that I'm probably going to name Jordan Thompson as my debut breakout author for 2020. She is just that good and just that polished, and I've only read a couple of chapters. So I can't wait till I can dive completely into that one 
and um, definitely looking forward to having her come on here in April to talk about that as well. So I am very, very excited for, for the next two months. There's so much happening. Um, so I appreciate you guys popping on tonight to listen to me ramble about my February wrap up. Make sure you hop on to Goodreads, check out all of my uh, reviews. And um, if you have any questions, you can always hit me up here on the page. Otherwise, you guys have a fantastic night. Bye.